Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, so today I was going to start another uh, power supply video in our series, and I think I'm going to delay that a day because Jerry Motes um, asked a very good question on a power supply that he has. It's a Trip Lights uh, PR60, I think is what it is, uh, 60 amp uh, power supply and he is tripping a 20 amp circuit breaker when he powers it on so uh, he's thinking about putting a thermistor in the thing i think it's a good idea let me show you why we're going to jump in the schematic and we're going to walk through a power supply okay i think it's time we do that let's do it all right thanks for watching guys thumbs up if you like this okay hey thanks jerry for asking the question appreciate it okay guys the trip light power supply got it from the internet it's the PR60, you can see down here in the lower right corner, it looks like the 60D. Probably some modifications they did to the uh, circuit, and this one's the D version. Uh, I was trying to make out a year, 924.93. Wow. Alright, now let's just look at this. This looks like the power cord right here, okay? And we have a ground terminal coming off the third prong, and the hot coming up here the line coming up through switch one not sure what this device is here I don't know if that's a, a capacitor a thermal protection device or some surge device it's really hard to tell from that symbol um, and then it goes through the fuse and through this primary winding and back to the plug so that's the primary side of the power supply very simple switch fuse no EMI filtering, there's nothing there. Just very simple circuit down here, okay? Now off the transform, there's two windings. You can see there's this winding and this one. They're both center tapped. Now the center taps come down here to, one of them comes to the bottom part of the, this row of capacitors. And then it comes through this transistor network. Let's just, I'm going to kind of skip over some stuff to try to make it easy to follow, okay? Um, the other one comes down to another row of capacitors, uh, the bottom part, and it looks like the negative plate on both of them, so it looks like a ground, and then it comes down to a row of transistors again, some control transistors it looks like. Okay, so let's just go back up here, and let's follow the rest of this winding. These two windings here come through a couple of diodes, they join and they go to these capacitors, a couple large capacitors, to ground. Okay, so it looks like this is a power supply that feeds this transistor, and this transistor is controlled by, by this stuff. It's just stuff for right now, okay? But it's controlled by this transistor, and when this stuff turns on the transistor, then it comes down and it, it completes path to the base of these transistors. So it looks like it's controlling whether these transistors turn on or off, okay? It also splits down and goes to the base of these. So it looks like it, set, it turns on both these transistors. So this guy here is controlling these uh, transistor banks, okay? By this stuff. For right now we're going to call it just this stuff. And this powers this uh, we're going to call it a housekeeping voltage for this stuff or this transistor to control this. So that's part of a control voltage, okay? Now, the other winding, um, one set of wires comes to this RM1 and then it comes over here to this RM2 and it looks like AB, AB and then plus, 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 plus. So those look like bridge rectifiers to me just like these diodes, they come off the diodes, they go through diodes and come over here. Same thing with these, it looks like they come off uh, these bridge rectifiers and see these two plus pins go to the top of this capacitor bank and these two plus come down here to this capacitor bank. So this winding looks like the power, the one that has all the power on it and these big old banks of capacitors that are uh, 6,000 or 6800. Those are 6800, almost 7000 microfarad caps. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, that's like 35 
That's over 30,000 microfarads of capacitance, and there's another 30,000. And these two capacitors are essentially in parallel. One set is tied to one, one winding and, well, you know, through one rectifier, and the other one's set through the other guy. So that's a lot of capacitance going through bridge rectifiers. Now, the interesting thing is, is often once you go through a transformer bridge rectifiers capacitors, then you may go through some regulation circuitry, and that's exactly what it looks like is going on here. It looks like all this stuff and all this stuff up here is part of a regulation circuit. Okay. Now, if we just jump over here to the output. Now, okay, let me just go back for a sec. When you go through a regulation circuit, sometimes you regulate the positive voltage and sometimes you regulate the negative voltage. And if it's a higher voltage output, sometimes you regulate the, the, the negative leg. Uh, I call it the negative leg or the return leg. Uh, some people just automatically call it a ground leg. Um, see the ground symbols? Um, we have to see where those grounds are. And if we come over here, we see right here, this is C ground, chassis ground. So it looks like after you go through this isolated transformer, you do all this stuff, then they reference the power supply to chassis ground. Okay? So that way the voltage isn't floating between positive and negative. You know, some of these lab or bench power supplies, they have a positive, negative, and then a chassis ground that you can strap those two things together. This power supply, it's doing it for you right here. So, it's to me, it's kind of upside down, right? It's the negative here and the positive on the bottom. So these are our output terminal, our binding posts, and then they have this circuit right here, which has this like SCR here, this thyristor. I'd have to look up that part number, uh, but I, I want to make this fairly quick video. So, but this guy here looks like it's being controlled by this chip, and he's being controlled by. Well, he he looks like an input. Oops, sorry about that. This tracing lines they go up to this capacitor and then they go up to the input of this uh, op amp it looks like. It could be a comparator but I think it's an op amp. And there's a voltage reference. See between the output there's these two resistors. Uh, the, you know, the divider of it comes in this pin and then we have this other pin right here, pin 1, coming out and it goes up here too. So this guy here is comparing uh, this connection from the output of these to this one. So we'd have to look up this part. Um, it's hard for me to make that out. It looks like an MC343423. Okay, now th these two pins are tied together and they're tied up here, so I think those are just ground pins and the positive comes in here through this voltage divider but it also goes through this guy and the curious thing is what controls that because that fires this this guy turns this guy on and what I would assume that would do just because of where he's situated is when power is turned off he probably is supposed to discharge these capacitors quickly so you don't just have a lot of voltage charged up on caps here so I think when the power supply is turning off, this guy is going to discharge these uh, these big old 2200 microfarad capacitors. Looks like there's 2200 microfarad cap there. It looks like just one. And then a 200 ohm resistor as just a load resistor. That'll slowly leak off that, that capacitor. I think this must be for a fault mode then, because this looks like a bleeder resistor for that capacitor. Then we have a small 0.1 mic for high frequency filtering. So that's kind of sitting here at the output. This is a, a gate on the, what is that, LM614. So that op amp, this one's not being used, so they just tie it like this to keep it quiet, you know, keep so they have a known operation of this in the circuit because it's not being used and it's 
and it's in a chip with these four guys here. So this is U2C and this is U2A so this A, B, C, D and, and gate C is not used. Now here's a potentiometer right here to adjust um, whatever this guy's looking at and he's going to help control this guy and here's another potentiometer and he's comparing a couple things and he's going to also uh, control this guy so it looks like kind of a window comparator operation and then we have a voltage reference here and um, you know I'm gonna have to look at I'll, I'll look at this maybe I'll do a part two guys if you guys are interested I, I'm just kinda walking through this just to kinda show the, the main thing we're talking about is the input circuit in rush you can see a huge bank of capacitors and then I'm just kinda walking through this power supply so you can kinda see what it looks like but another way to uh, so we kinda converging on on whatever this is whatever is going on here and so we kinda followed up to this point now from this point if we follow in we go okay negative comes here and well here let's just follow positive I think positive is going to be easier I can see it so positive comes in goes to this circuit here but it goes to these two wires here one of them goes to this top of this capacitor bank and the other one comes to the top of this so to see positive uh, the, the power comes through here through these rectifiers charges up these caps and the positive leg just come straight out so we're not regulating the positive leg um, so the negative leg looks like it's going to go through this bank of transistors so negative comes up and we have two wires taken off again one goes to this bank of transistors and one goes to this bank of transistors okay now the way that works is this wire goes to the collector of each one of these transistors so the emitter of each one of these transistors is tied to this negative so the current comes through the positive and then around the negative and then through the collectors through the emitters back to the uh, capacitors so there's the loop right there we go through bridge rectifiers plus part of the capacitors out here through our positive through our load back here to our negative return side and then we go through the collectors of these transistors goes they look like uh, NPN transistors because the arrows pointing towards the E so that's NPN so it goes to the collector down to the emitter and then back to the capacitors and then back to the rectifier and then back to the transformer so that's the big loop and this is just the control circuit that we could look at this is kind of an interesting thing it'd be kind of yeah, I might look into these. If you guys are interested, I'll do a part two and cover what's going on here. But there we go. Huh, probably a little longer than I want to do. I, I want to just do a quickie just to kind of show you. No inrush current protection. No inrush current protection. That fuse, I'd be curious to see what the fuse is supposed to be rated for because he's got to support a huge inrush current. And, uh, and then we have these uh, capacitors here. Yeah, so power comes in, rectifiers, big bank of capacitors, lots of inrush current. That transformer is probably very heavy. Um, this looks like, you know, it's a 60 amp power supply. So there's a lot of current, a lot of power coming off of these guys. So that transformer must be a heavy transformer. Uh, big girthy power supply. So the inrush current has to magnetically charges transformers as well as uh, fill up those capacitors all right well hey thanks that was fun if you guys like that and you want to see more of that kind of thing give me a thumbs up we'll walk through some more circuits like this if you want to see more of this one let me know all right thanks guys